ever seen. It's like it was 28 bucks shipped from China. Now, I bought this because it was almost kind of humorous that just what it was. It's basically a uh, you know it's a it's a scale miniature model of uh, a number of very popular products we've seen before. You know, it's a knockoff Toyota. None of it's licensed, so uh, it's a Toyota Hilux body, just like we've seen from uh, you know the licensed one from Tamiya or the RC Four Wheel Drive. You know, Mojave. Uh, but it has an interior. It has tiny little uh, knockoff uh, rock beasts, pit bull rock beasts. I mean, they're they're clearly rock beasts. Uh, the the truck is basically all plastic for the most part. It appears anyway. Other than it does have a uh, ladder frame metal stamped chassis. But I haven't. I've had this thing for a couple of months. It's just been sitting here. I never touched it though. It was just in the box. So. You know, finally thinking that maybe it'd be time to get to it. It does have a bag of hardware that's all Phillips head screws, but you know, that's what what do you expect? I just want to see what can we really expect for a twenty-eight dollar RC kit. Uh, thanks for everyone for you know popping in. Try and keep up with the comments as best I can. Try and get you guys the best view of the kit as we can. You know, as for uh, for reasonable look so this is like a i think it was called a wpl now we've seen this thing we've seen versions of this before uh in a military truck now this is just the version where they threw a toyota body on it um but we're gonna see that so anyway it comes in a box that shows the military truck and then inside is just all these plastic bags and we're going to see what we've got there so we're gonna throw the box to the side. The instructions look uh, look very detailed. We've got two pieces of uh, of paper folded in half to try and make a book, I guess. We'll see. Where is the starting point? Up. Oh, all right. So it's not trying to make a book. It's just they're folded in half. That's all we got. All right. Let's dig in. Grab a knife. Uh, as far as the brand, I think it's just called a WPL. Uh, I don't know if there's a brand beyond that. By no means am I suggesting this yet. I want to see how bad this thing is for 28 bucks shipped from overseas. You know, that's now I think the price has gone up and down. You might be able to find it cheaper. It might be more expensive now. I don't know. When I bought it, it was $28. That was around Christmas time. Um, and I can't remember where exactly I bought it. I did put a uh, link to this in one of the scale news updates where I talked about, uh, you know, seeing this thing pop up. But, all right, the first thing we're going to do is grab the frame rail. So we're starting right with, right with the frame. Now, none of these bags are labeled as far as what goes where. So in the, uh, the frame rails also aren't, I don't know if they're supposed to be flat or bent, but they're definitely not flat. We got a pretty, pretty good art. You can see there as it, it bends down, you know, flexes down. It's got a pretty significant bow. I'm guessing that they're supposed to be straight. And let's see, what are we trying to do? We've got to build the shock eliminator spring. <laughs> shock. So we have the shock eliminator spring, the shock eliminator sleeve. Interesting. They don't call them shocks. They call them shock eliminators. So now we've got to hunt down what bag these parts are going to be in. This is this is definitely the axles. So and that's interior and details. That's transmission motor. So this is a kit. It but it does come with a motor and a servo. No ESC and it actually has a one LED. Just one random five millimeter LED. So the shocks have to be in this big bag. We have a, a package of D rings that are just taped to the outside. All right, we're gonna throw all this stuff in this 
Thank you. All right. So thanks for everyone coming in. I'm check. I'll check the comments the best we can. Uh, like the video if you get a chance. Subscribe if you aren't already. I appreciate it. Thanks everyone for popping in. The live video stuff is. YouTube did some big changes, made uh, some big improvements to the live feeds. So now the comments that are on the side, you can actually scroll down and actually still get all of those live, co live comments because I think there's a lot of you know fun back and forth that happens with those comments uh, in the video. So uh, I'm glad that they did that. Uh, what did I miss? So nothing so far. We just opened this thing up. It's called like the WPL something, WPL 14 or something along those lines. Um, that's that's about as much as I know about it. This uh, I think the version this has like a truggy style bed to it. It, it looks like a honcho back end. Um, I'm betting you know, we see flying part. This we'll see how how this can be. <laughs> uh, don't use the factory servo. It's not a real servo. I'm I'm not gonna lie. I'm not I'm not planning on using a lot of this car. It, I guess I'm not really planning to use this car much in general. I just want to put it together. Um, almost like a model build rather than anything. We'll see how it does. Uh, I'm sure one of the guys around here wouldn't wouldn't mind. Uh, they can take it and do whatever they want with it. I just want to build it and see what it see what it's like overall. By no means am I uh, planning to do a comprehensive review on this car. So we dumped all that out, or the shop up to there. So they're, I guess they kind of come pre-assembled. Let's kind of stack this here. Here's a look at those little tires. They look very familiar. Um, I'm not gonna lie, the compound isn't the worst feeling compound I've ever felt. Um, but you know, the, uh, Nothing fancy beyond that. There's no real lip to them. So there is five. You do get a, a spare. And then we also get five wheels. We just stack this stuff together so we don't, we can kind of see where we're going. More body parts. I mean, it is kind of amazing at the same time, the amount of amount of stuff they put on this thing and charge such a ridiculous amount for oh god it's got the you guys remember these from uh like old rcs as a kid the manual little like trim from like the double a powered cars used to see and maybe that maybe that's part of that not a real servo comment wow so I'm just trying to get some of this crap out of the way so we can get to what we're looking for. There's the other shock. So we have all four shocks. Now, our hardware bag. Um, could make some links and put our scroll drive Yoda axle up. There's probably a lot of things you could do. In the end, I mean, quality-wise, hard to say. I'm not expecting much for the price. I'm just here for the good times, right? So let's find what size Phillips screw we need to use. It doesn't really tell us. It just shows using a Phillips screw, but there's numerous sizes they all look about the same but just different lengths so nothing super now i'm going to uh just assume that these bend from <laughs> i mean you can you can see the, the curve in that guy there i'm going to put the widest portion in the middle Oof. The holes in the chassis are damn near as big as the head of the screws.
but these shocks are supposed to kind of ride as a bushing in there. All right. I think that they count on slop a lot. So you can see the screw just goes in there, kind of attaches the shock. The shock's got a uh, flange on the side there, you can kind of see. So that flange goes into the hole on the chassis. You tighten the screw head down all the way against it. And then you just get this slop between the two. And I think that's what's going to help or what's going to act like a ball end on a... <laughs> ball end on the top of a normal shock uh 28 bucks well spent <laughs> i've spent a lot more and a lot worse i have spent a lot more and a lot worse as well well i say that now let's see And these are directional, so this is going... Ah, so I can't make the bend the same because... I'm thinking that the bend in this chassis is a is caused by the stamping method that they used because they're both bent the exact same way, and it's just a stamped frame rail, so... All right. Uh, can I show the box again? I am using the box for trash, but uh, this is the box. Now, you can see the picture of the military truck on there. And on the back, that's what it shows, you know, it's supposed to be. But then they just put a sticker on it that says, uh, this is technically called the yellow kit. That's all it says, yellow kit. So, um, no, that's, that's all the information. There's not, there's hardly any writing on it at all, <laughs> but so we've got the shock eliminators bolted to the, uh, the truck frame. Now, next step is to bolt the gearbox shell and the driving system in place. Doesn't necessarily show an order or anything. So we're going to make something up. Where? Yeah, that's where it shows. Ugh. Not gonna lie. Uh, why do you build a kit if you do not like it? Cheap Chinese stuff can also be a lot of fun if you like modding, soldering, tinkering. Uh, the Orlando kit. I actually kind of like that Orlando kit. They're not. They're not so bad. They're definitely a, a little bit higher quality than than this thing though. But that thing's like, that thing's also much smaller. That's like cell phone size. Um, and I do enjoy building them. Sometimes I just uh, laugh at the, you know, design method or construction ideas that they thought were passable. No, nope. other way. I'm just surprised at the size of the holes that they put in the chassis. And I really wish that I had a magnetized screwdriver. 
have to paint the body? I don't think so. Oh. Sorry. Let's see, we got. Front and rear screws only. Right. Just got in here. What truck is it? Uh, so, I'm sure that the uh, "what truck is it" comment is going to happen a lot tonight or today. I don't know how long this build is going to take yet. With how much is pre-assembled, I would have to imagine. Not too long. But it is a WPL something. I guess I kind of thought that these, uh, this car would be smaller than it is, so I could definitely use the larger screwdriver. These screwdrivers are kind of the worst. For some reason, I just thought this truck was much smaller than it is since the last time I opened the box up. So I'm actually here so I can get my batteries and everything charging down here on the floor because there's a an event here in the uh, Folsom area tomorrow. It's a scale event, scale trail run, uh, hosted by, it's good, like the SBC semi-annual or annual trail run. So I'm getting everything charged for that. I'm gonna take the honcho out there tomorrow. It's waterproof and uh, So it's waterproof and there's a good chance of rain. So trying to cover all my bases. I guess this just drops in. It doesn't show screwing it in yet. So maybe I shouldn't put that yet. Now I need that funky tray. Is it this one? Yes. And that trim. So this thing. They don't give you real clear views of a lot of things. It takes some deciphering. That's in. Hopefully once I can kind of get the every halves put together and have more of a chassis feel, a little bit easier to hold stuff in place. Okay. Never have been a huge fan of Phillips head hardware, but. <laughs> All right, we're getting there. I can't, does anybody know of a cheaper like a, a kit version RC car. This one was $28 shipped. So I'm trying to, I was trying to think of it before I made the, the title. Like for an actual kit, 
shift is is the key. And I I was I was having a hard time, so I did not feel too clickbaity making that uh making that title. Right. So whoops. A sometimes basher rock star. I don't know if they're super micro crawl. I don't are either of those two things kit versions of RC cars? I'm not talking about an assembled, ready to run, you know, toy grade car. This is a kit version. Twenty euros or so is more than twenty-eight U.S. dollars for this. I'm pretty maybe wait what's the euro right now um <laughs> I, I did not think that i'll probably be making anything for this i, I do not i do not have uh, much intentions of putting ener any energy into this car after I hit the end button on this live stream. Well, uh, I, I don't know what the exact scale of this thing is yet. I guess uh, I, I thought they labeled it as a 14th, but it might be 24th. I don't know. Someone was saying 24th. This is way bigger than like my What's uh, my ECX Barrage? This is way bigger than that. My, my 124th ECX Barrage. This definitely feels more like a 14th scale than the 18th scale. Or probably 18th. It's, I don't know. Here's my honcho. Here's this. You know? No, it's way bigger than a 124 scale model body kit. Um, definitely way bigger than that. So for that size, you would want like a one, uh, like an ECX barrage, I think. Okay. Here's that, uh, servo. Goes this way. Drops down, I assume. Kind of pushes into place. It has a uh, little dragon on the top. Let's see. Careful, don't sneeze and won't break. <laughs> so we've got to bolt the bumper and grill assembly into the car. Oops. See, they have all different lengths of screws on this thing, but there's no, there's nothing to denote where to use what size on anything. This is just blind guessing.
the uh, there is some screws that are like a slightly like some of these might be M3 coarse thread or something like that, and there is some that probably look like more like an M2 or a 2.5 maybe, but can't really tell where you're supposed to put any of them. So we're just going to keep going. We'll see what we come out with. Not going to lie, I'm not overly concerned. So does it show anywhere where this is supposed to go? No. No idea. But this pretty much closes off that box, so it kind of has to stay in there, I would think. Yeah. No idea. I'm just going to feed it out one of these low. No, that looks stupid. I don't know. I'm just going to leave it in there for now. And screw this cover on. So I don't know how many of you that are. Um, let's see, where's your crawling spot showing $50 budget build place that looks killer. Uh, so the place that I'm, that I've taken the, so I've filmed at like three or four different spots with the budget build. Um, however, three of them have all been at Folsom Lake, just different locations. Um, Folsom Lakes here near Folsom, California, which I'm not far from. Um, it's like 20 minutes from my house. Uh, Folsom Prison for you Johnny Cash fans. Near there. Um, and then the other one was further north near uh, Colfax, California. Which is a little bit further away from me. Um, but the one Folsom Lake is where I will be tomorrow for the SBC trail ride. Um, whatever it's called. Get together of some sort. Uh, it shows putting the transmission in, but like I said, nothing holds it in yet. It just falls in. Well, I guess there is screw. There's screw spots, but it doesn't show to install the screws. I'm wondering if it's supposed to get locked down later. It's funny, the instructions start over on every page. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. <laughs> um, nothing, nothing, nothing. I'm screwing it down. Seems ridiculous not to. Now, it also didn't tell me to install the motor, but how the hell else are you going to get to it? I'm taking it back out. So, here's the motor. It's your normal, uh, you know, old style. Now, it's got the gear, a brass pinion gear pressed onto it already. I can see the plastic gear there, so it just meshes itself. Now, at the same time, I don't see any... There's no holes for it to hold itself to screw it in. There's, there's threaded holes in the front of the motor like you would expect, but inside here where the motor goes, there's no holes coming through. And you really can't 
get it on with that drive shaft in place. Just bending it out of place. I guess that's it. I can't tell if the gears are meshing or not. No. There it goes. So there's no screws that hold the motor in. Okay. I can hear the motors engage now. And I can feel it spinning. So that's as far as I can push it in. So you just press it in. There is no there's nothing holding it in. But it's a hard enough press for this uh that I don't expect that it's going in. It definitely won't be falling out. Uh as it drives nowhere and is never, you know. Really got to push down or use oh, there it goes he's really got to push down to get it <laughs> pushed into place it's the gom all over again uh no the or so the orlando that you guys are talking about is like way small i mean it's, that orlando is like half the size of this truck this thing's much larger than that orlando was um that orlando i've actually had a little bit of fun with it's they're not it's not that bad um this We'll see. Twenty-eight dollars, remember. Twenty-eight dollars. <laughs> so now the axles. Wow, this is, uh, they really took the build design right off of uh, RC four-wheel drive Toyota axle with the, uh, interesting. So here's the front axle shafts, dog bone ends, and uh, plastic ring gear. There is... There is plastic, but you see these little the sliding pieces there. Those are the plastic bushings um, that you probably have to slide into place. Yeah, let's see. There, there. Oop. So let's make sure that ring gear is on the right side. Yep. So that's all right. I guess it only goes in one way. So that, now we need the top half. So is that, is you, that's kind of how it fits in there. Now we have our top half that presses on. Kind of snaps together like a uh, snap tight model for those of you that were original model builders. And then we've got a diff cover with four long ass screws. Okay. 
diff cover kind of snaps into place too. I almost wish that this whole model snapped together like that. It would, it would make a, a lot of this much easier. So, and then we've got a third member that bolts in. So third member comes assembled with the drive shaft joint and everything in place. Pinion is in there. It's a metal pinion shaft. I can see the plastic bushings and that plastic gear. <laughs> Let's see. I'm just trying to, so there's these little, like I was talking about how it snaps together, these little pegs on it. And they're oriented around the four screws that are supposed to clamp this axle together. And I was trying to find out which orientation is uh, it's supposed to go with. Tell you what, though, I really wish that it snapped together like that on all these parts. It would have gone so much more smoothly. Oh, that, that's some quality rotation there. Now, one thing I did not do is I did not grease these gears. It does come with a soy sauce packet of grease here. Um, however, I don't care enough to grease this. So dock me on those points if you like, but <laughs> I'm not getting that on my hands. <laughs> Josh, just put it in a box and get a hammer from the shop and go. <laughs> yeah. So I, I, I'm just going to say that this is this does not have any. Uh, I mean, uh, it's loosening up a little bit. It's kind of seeding itself in. With a little bit of grease, it's probably a super high quality. <laughs> it works itself in a little bit, not going to lie. A little bit better there. I still have to screw this thing together. All I see here is that it shows really long screws. Now, the only long ones I see... Now, on their illustrations, it shows fully threaded screws. However, the only long screws in here are these guys, which... See if you can see how it's got like three threads at the very end of it. Interesting. But that's the only screw in this package that's long. Honestly, it doesn't even look like it's long enough to go all the way through. Is there another package of screws? Gotta be, right? No. Oh, there was pet there. Yep, they're there. They were in that axle bag and just loose. Make sure you tighten these down in a star pattern with the best quality gear mesh. Still spins after tightening two of the four down. So we're looking promising. So, still looking good. I would definitely rate this as a uh, about a seven and a half difficulty out of ten. Get the C8 out and glue it all. <laughs> so, it still spins after it's screwed together.
Well, I'm not gonna lie, I, I halfway screwed this up already. You're definitely supposed to put the knuckles. Oh, look at these fancy dog bone cups. It's like a captured design. Horizon Hobby buying Hobby Co. Holy crap. Where did you see that? Where where did you see that posted? I have not. RC Car Action posted it. I uh, I got I have to at least check this while we're here. So let's see. Um, I don't see them. I don't see it posted. <laughs> um, so far, I see it posting a snapshot of a letter from Horizon. <sighs> hmm. I heard rumblings. Of, I haven't. Um, let's see. So what it says is it says that Horizon Hobby submitted a bid, I think. Um, that, that doesn't necessarily mean that they're buying it yet. You know, it's, the bidding is open. And not, not, not open to necessarily everybody, but, you know, you have to be, you have to be uh, qualified and all that. But um, I haven't heard if, you know, I think there's, there's a little bit before that all is finalized so we'll see um so let's see seeing if we um so yeah i haven't been on facebook all that much about it but so anyway i i did hear that they were bidding as well We'll see. We'll see who ends up with it. All right. So now we've got a. Uh, can anyone bid? <laughs> Though get bank no. <laughs> that is a that is a much bigger task than looking to uh, <laughs> jump into. So there's our front axle, our steering knuckle. Ooh, we've got. I don't know, 20 degrees of steering, maybe 15. Uh, what do I just started watching? What do I think of it? Uh, I think that this is a $28 RC kit so far. I, I would not say that it's a $30 kit yet. $28 though. I see it. Um, I got to build the rear axle still though. So we got to get our bushings in place. Rear axle, everything else seems the same. Besides the front or rear. All right. Um, let's see. It's thirty dollars as long as the body is nice and not a total loss. Well worth it if you won't if you want to waste a little bit of time. Yeah, I mean. 
We'll see how it is first. We got a little bit before we have to really decide. All right. Again, I'm not using the supplied grease, the little packet that they provide. I, I'm yeah, you know, I bought it because you have to at least try to you know for something like this. Why not? I think I had, I think I had also at the time there was a so I think this came from Gearbest, which is you know half the time sketchy. You just, you know, you're always got to be leery of the quality. It's, you know, you get some, I've bought camera gear off there, before. not like actual camera gear, but like pieces like these things. No, I didn't buy this one, but they're basically like, um, oops, sorry, getting a phone call. Um, you know, pieces that are like not super functional, but how bad could they screw it up? And I've been surprised at times because they can screw things. All right, front rear axles are done. Now we've got to put on our steering tie rod on the bottom. Oh, so now they started putting what screw? This says a number one screw at least. Did I miss screw out calls before? No. No, they didn't have them. Okay. Just making sure. They're just sporadic about when they want to call things out and when they don't. And I have no idea what a number one screw means. Number five screw, number one screw. Where is their stupid exploded view to tell you? Gotta be one if they're gonna call it out now. Kind of, but they don't tell you. Number one, there's 70 of. Number two, there's six. Yeah, I don't know. That's still pretty worthless, not gonna lie. Um, what's the plastic like? It's, I mean, it's basically like a toy grade plastic. You, you know, the tires though are better than i expected but the rest of it is just toy grade-ish plastic like you would expect Ugh. i mean like putting the steering link on it, you just feel like you're gonna break it you have to push it this is a super short screw and it just does not want to go in. It says that I'm supposed to use the one that there's 70 of and this is the one that there's the most of. So I mean, it's definitely this supposed to be this screw. The top and the bottom of the knuckle have the same size hole. It didn't break. The screwdriver just slipped. It sounded like it broke. <laughs> All right, that's as tight tight as it's getting because it really feels like it's going to snap. Let's I'm really just waiting to bury that screwdriver right into my thumb. How hard I have to push, I know it's going to happen. So now we've got 
So now you've got this little truss. See, that's going to be probably lower shock and link mount maybe. Yeah, probably lower shock and link mount and the upper link mounts on the top there. Four link truss design. Not terrible. What would be cool is if this cut kit costs like $75 and was made half decent quality. Number one, number five screw. That must be that long half threaded one. So there's eight of them. It's got to be that one. Right. So these long-winded ass screws are supposed to hold the two axle halves together a little bit as well. Since there is no screws like in the tops of the knuckles or anything like that, kind of rely on this to hold the outer portions of the axle together. I would have known how much pain this plastic was going to be. I would have got a power driver. However, I'm pretty sure it's dead. Yeah, it's it's pretty dead though. And I don't think I have my charger. Just would have not have expected a power driver to be needed on. Are those plastic axle shafts so the internal shaft of the axle was not plastic it was metal however it had metal ends on the or sorry plastic ends on the axle shaft um, for the dog bone portion and then it's got a metal um, stub axle so it does I mean it does have lots of plastic on the axle shaft but the actual long portion of the axle shaft was technically metal and then it had plastic gears as well Now again, I'm not saying that it should have had all metal axle shafts and gears for $28. So this is definitely a toy grade RC in kit form. I do believe that the ready to run version of this truck was the same price. I think they're just, they know that us suckers of RC fans will buy something if it says it's a kit laughing at us the whole time that we'll pay more money just so we can put it together ourselves these screws just do not like to start if they just wanted to start easier, it would be so much better. <sighs> All right, steering link. Bottom steering link is on. Now we have this funky looking hockey stick steering link that is going to be our uh, drag link, I'm pretty sure. Yes, yes we do. That goes on the driver's side. Let's 
Spirit. I did not push start on one of my batteries to get them charging. I wondered how that was taking so long. <laughs> Just use the provided lube on your screws. Not the worst idea I've heard all night. I might just start using a hammer and just driving the screws in. Come on. Close enough. So, front, rear axle. Ugh. Gotta put the truss on the rear stuff. We suck. JB Weld, call today. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> Switch hands, it'll be like a stranger building it. <laughs> I like your logic. I sit on my hands first, it'll be like I'm watching the live feed. Was this buy a mistake or would I buy it again? I don't know yet. I mean, Honestly, even if what I'm, I'm not, I'm never going to run this thing. I'm 99%. I am not, if you're here for a comprehensive review of the WPL yellow truck or whatever the hell this thing is called, this is not the video for you. However, you know, if you're looking for something to build on a Friday night, preferably while drinking worst ways to spend your weekend however I'm still at the office so alcohol is not an option need something to set it off sick of pushing against my hand way better I've never had to work that hard to get a screw in any one tenth scale car I've ever built. All right. Now, page three. What are we at here? It is. Number one connecting rod, same assembly, opposite side. Which one is the number one connecting rod? I think it's this one. It's got two bends in it. Shows the upper hole of the chassis. Piss. 
At least this screwdriver is magnetic. Stock truck demo derby. I the thing is, is that I'm guessing that these things are so slow that there would be no demo. They would just they would either have to break on their own, or they would just stop. They would hit each other and just bounce off. I don't think they have enough mass. One link. So these are the upper. Uh, <clears throat> these are the upper link chassis side screws. As you can imagine, there is no ball end to these. They're just a uh, open loop on each end. So, anyway, to give you an idea of the links, they're just, that's all there is to them. Nothing, nothing crazy. All right, now, we got to do the same for the rear. Um... Bend out. That must be a lower. There we I will say that it feels like you shouldn't tighten these links up too much because they may hamper the crazy flex that this truck is really going to get when we're done. So just get leave them a little loose. Let them let them flop around. Wouldn't want anyone who bought this truck to get any less than the maximum amount of flex. And damn near all these links look the same. Out, out. Oh wait. No, it's four. Okay. Just making sure. Out. There it is. Last one. So All the links are nice and floppy. So we're getting uh, we're getting a little bit of a chassis setup going. There's the grill, the grill detail. You can see it's got actual headlight lenses, a fairly, quite a bit of depth to that front 3D grill. Um, you know, that's what we're looking at so far. Let's see, now we do that. Then we put the axles on and then the lower links. Well, I can already tell these upper links are just gonna be a joy to attach.
again, I think the uh, the key here, leave everything loose on this, this suspension. Not that you have a ton of choice. It's either loose or binding, but... Right. So I want to make sure to get the drive shaft in place before you start putting a before you finalize putting the links on because otherwise otherwise we're assuming that things will bind up that's not necessarily true so does the link go on first the shot go on first um, I don't know all the arrows just point together no freaking idea Looks like the shot goes on last. We're going to go with that method. God damn it. Getting these. God damn it. All right, we got one on. There we go. Uh, let's see what comments from this. Uh, oh, and it was Tia Mel Shilvarian, so it would have been in the set. Is this kit going to be censored Russian? No, no, and maybe not quite. All right. So, link on, link on. Our shock in place. Trying to get the other side. We're damn near ready to have a roller here. Is ridiculous. Oh, there we go. Toy grade four linked solid axle RC. Kind of cool. Not condoning this thing yet, but. Are we taking a dinner break? I, so before I started this live video, I called my wife and said, asked about dinner and was thinking either, you know, we have dinner there obviously, but she asked if I was hungry and I was like, ah, I'm going to, I was thinking if normally before a live build, it's a better idea if I go eat because they take forever. I get hungry, I get cranky if I'm not you know, fed at, on time. And I was like, no, I'm not going to go get dinner before this. That way I don't screw around and I get, I just build this and get done and go eat some food. So I will not be taking a dinner break. All right. There's our front suspension. Oh yeah. Look at that flex. All the flex right there. That, that's good stuff. <laughs> Damn it, I didn't hook up the drive shaft. I specifically said 
You should do that. God, I'm an idiot. All right, take out the freaking link again. All right, fixed. Front's on, time for the rear. Upper links first. Thank you for everybody who's joining. I appreciate it. Yeah, 143 people in here right now. If you are watching, hit the like button. With 55 likes and 143 people watching. It's ridiculous. Just kidding. Thanks again, all of you guys who did show up. Think of that many people. All to look at this crappy $28 truck. Not crappy yet. I mean, kind of crappy. It's $28 worth of crap. Could be way worse. Way worse. Than so far, I'm, I'm still seeing $28 worth of truck here. So, you want a $28 truck. I, I can't be mad at you for buying this one. I mean, other than the fact that it's got knockoff pit bulls and a, you know, Toyota body. But toy grade stuff, you know, they're going to do that. It is what it is. I'm not going to stop that. All right, Link. And then Shock. I just can't tell. Like this, honestly, the suspension, the springs feel a little tight for the weight. It's got a decent amount of spring to it. I have no, I'm guessing that this truck in ready to run format has a, you know, maybe like a three, I don't know, three or four cell, like nickel metal style pack built into that front enclosure maybe. Or maybe it runs on like double A's or something like that. I don't know. Maybe we'll get to that if I don't smash this thing in the process of trying to assemble it. I will say that if I was serious about wanting to try and make this truck work, one thing I would definitely seriously consider doing is figuring out a uh, smooth skid plate to kind of go between all this to help stop these big uh, lips and edges on here. Okay. Let's see. Um, pretty small NICAD battery, sounds like this one. Under the under the toolbox. Okay, so this thing does have like a toolbox in the back. That's where it must that's where it goes. Interesting. And yeah, like I said, for the money, it could be worse. Does it show how I'm supposed to hook up this servo? Mm, nope. Does not. Completed view, yes. All right, now we're supposed to do the bed. Complete. So it's kind of like it's kind of a, honestly, I, I kind of dig the flatbed design that it has. See the uh, rear taillight 
stickers. No, paint. Red taillight paint. Um, but it's got like, you know, a small rise rear bed there. Kind of not that bad. Um, somebody put hobby grade electronics in the military truck version and was able to fit everything under the hood neatly. Um, yeah, you know, I, I've seen that a lot of people bought that the military version of this as well. Um, I can't say that I heard really anything good about it from, from them. You know, they all kind of said it was, a, you know, dumb purchase and kind of what I was, uh, I mean, it's a hundred percent what I was expecting, but it is what it is. Was it show? Yeah. I guess. Yeah. I think it does technically show waiting to install this bed, like with the actual screws, but I do not feel like trying to hold this thing in position the whole time. Now, it also has like a metal bed cover. Dang, this is the heaviest piece in this entire kit. I think this weighs more than a tire does. It's super thick. I almost wonder if they did it like to try and balance the weight of this thing. But I guess it has a heavy ass battery in the back. I don't know why you would. So this, and then there's a spare tire mount. Let's see. It's gotta be this thing. Yep. So that goes there. Spare tire mount, and then four or five screws. Once it's all completed, can you put a hamster in it like the Kia commercials? Um, this will teach me to charge my batteries. So I ran last weekend too, and I just haven't charged them since then. Knew that I had to go, or knew that I wanted to go running this weekend. The only thing is, is that the weather tomorrow is like up in the air a little bit. So hopefully the weather holds out. If it's like super crappy tomorrow though, I'm probably going to bail. As much as the event looks like fun to go to, if it's going to be crappy, I'm not going to do it. So, there's our, uh, see the, I'm guessing that it's the same wheels, basically, as the military ones. That same screw or a different screw? Different screw. Not sure if you're supposed to glue those tires on or what. Probably. If you're serious about it, probably should glue the tires on. Although it doesn't show anything about it. Um, so that's all for the bed. It's all for that little set. Now it's time for the body. So. Trying to see if there's anything to. Oh, there it is. I'm going to go ahead and try and attach this 
rear portion of this bed just to hold it in place. So here's the hard body. Uh, detail on it's not bad. It's, uh, I mean, the, I don't know what the, the material is, like a styrene or an ABS, but um, let's see. Uh, don't glue yet. You can paint the wheels. Not going to happen. I promise. So let's see, we've got the glass to install first. Snaps into place. Then we have the back of the cab that, that goes Kind of there we go. Okay, so we've got the glass in the cabin, and then two screws. So, glass fits pretty well. Let's see. Who likes tacos? Everybody likes tacos. Uh, it is Friday. People, don't people eat tacos? It's fish fries. They do they fish tacos. Everyone sells fish tacos on Friday. Right now. Last one today, right? All right, now we have a full interior to install. So. So we have the dash. Looks like there's a bunch of stuff that should bolt onto the dash first though. Yep, steering wheel. Pushes through, good enough. Um, and then we have the bench seat. That just all kind of snaps together. But in reality, <laughs> a, a little nice little detail detailed interior huh. all right let's see uh, this come with electronics or do you need to put your own in it so it comes with a servo and a motor um, but you need to provide the the rest of it honestly uh, Shanna I was gonna use uh, well I'm not really gonna probably use it but this is the uh, stock ESC receiver combo from the ECX barrage that I had and uh, I was just like yeah if I'm gonna complete it I'll just use that stuff now I don't know if I'm gonna actually do that for I'll just I'll give all this stuff to somebody and they can complete it they can have fun with it if they want um, that's a $28 body right there. I mean, I know. Okay. The body, there's a, there's a lot of detail in there. So the back of the interior snaps into place. 
kita. Dash fits in over that. And okay, that was all going to screw together at once, no? They don't show the screws for that. Pretty sure it needs screws. Could be wrong, but maybe. I'm not going to screw it in. I mean, they don't show screws to hold that front of the interior in. Maybe it screws off from the bottom. Um, but, so there's the cab and the interior, you know. It is proper left-hand drive. Just I don't know how that is if it's mirroring anything. Yeah, it is definitely well. It's mirrored with how I'm looking at it. It's probably not mirrored for everybody else. But uh, anyway, all right. So there's that. Now we also have door handles. We have three windshield wipers on this tree. Only two of them get used. We have a snorkel and we have mirrors. So, uh, mirrors are in place. Come on. All right, door handles are on. And where's the snorkel? Snorkel. Oh, there's a top to the snorkel. I think that must be this. Oh, the top to the snorkel even has like a little detail sticker in it. Um, okay. So. Like I said, there is three wipers. There is only two holes in the uh, cowl, though. So they do know how many are supposed to go on the car, at least. So you can see there. Windshield wipers, door handles, mirrors, full interior, snorkel, door. you know, <laughs> pretty, that's pretty. Now it does have these uh, stupid looking floorboards. I'm not going to install those because those are ridiculous. I don't like snorkels either, but I don't hate those as much as these stupid looking floorboards. So... There's that. All right, now it's time for this onto the truck. What is this? This is a toolbox. Oh, that goes on in a minute. Doesn't really show any order, just slows that you slam it all on there. Now the front grill does have to line up. Which it does. Start uh, trying to thread the needle of getting this all to bolt together. Can't believe I got that to work without dropping the screw first.
Okay, that part's on. Now the Rear part of that body tucks in under on the back. Definitely felt like it was going to break when I was trying to force it. Um, wait on that. So we have, so this is uh, their toolbox, but it shows as a battery cover. I'm doing this a lot. We have our headache rack. Or whatever. I don't know what you get. I don't know what other people call those, you know. It's not it's not really a roll bar. We always call them a headache rack in the Midwest. I'm not a hundred percent sure what everybody else calls them. Oh, it's, so that uh, headache rack, whatever I'm going to call it, uh, it's got little hinge spots built in that hold the uh, that battery cover. Not bad. There's a little uh, peg that kind of sticks up behind that, and you just kind of force it behind it to keep it closed. It feels secure enough. I mean, if you have a heavy battery in there that's not secured, um, I could see that being possibly an issue. That that definitely feels like it needs a longer screw. Right, getting there, it's looking good. Looking more and more like $28 every minute. So, there's a few little quirks with this, but it doesn't necessarily show the order of everything and you kind of have to do things in a certain order to be able to get some of the screws. But I'm not super concerned. This just kind of snaps over, it looks like. Yep. Just kind of press it in place. Okay. Battery covered. Uh, wheels and tires time. Slam these 
things on there. I should definitely be attaching these wheels before just keeping, <laughs> keep trying to reinstall all of them. Number four screw. Which one is the number four? Doesn't show. Let's guess the longest, largest one. I would have paid ten dollars extra just to have had hex head hardware. Where is I need more of that hardware? Hmm. Where there was not, I'm sure I used that other hardware somewhere else, but if anything, the biggest problem with this kit hardware quality or hardware size call out. Here we go. <laughs> we left off the running boards. They go here, but I think they look dumb. And, oh, I forgot. Whoop. There it is. Found it. So it all, see these little tiny little things? It has freaking clear side marker lights. That don't want to go in very well. There it goes. So, <laughs> see that side marker light? And you can see it's got like a little bit of amber behind it. And that's because on the body itself, like it's a Sharpie mark of amber. And uh, they give you three just in case. I don't know where the third one's supposed to go, but. Nothing on the tail light or anything. Now, it also has these uh, little D-rings that we put. They just kind of snap into place. Doesn't only have them in the front? I guess so. It comes with four, but I only see uh, mounts for two. All right. Um, well, so I didn't. Uh, I didn't install that servo mount. I guess I servo linkage. Let's see what they have for that. You know, I don't have like the servo on it to center it or anything like that, but let's at least uh, try and screw it in place. Thank you. 
like that. There we go. Got it. Oops. And we even have a spare wiper left. Throw all that in the parts bag for whoever gets this when I'm done. All right. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, yeah, it, like people are saying, the cost is around $38, $36 on Gear Best right now. Like, I got it for $28 it was, that was shipped. Um, I think there was also a code like RC18 off. RC18 off, and that was like 18% off the cost, too. Um, the wheelbase size, uh, well, I've got it. My mat here has a ruler. It is a seven and three quarter inch wheelbase, about. Um, as, a, as a rough estimate. I mean, I would say that the, you know, the body alone is is kind of that uh it's got it's got twenty eight dollars worth of value in it. <laughs> now I, I have no you know real intention of making this a uh, a running truck. It was more just of a entertaining Friday afternoon model build for me rather than other than anything else. No, not. It's almost there. It can almost flex that much. There is your Friday payoff right there. Um, yeah, like, so somebody was saying there, the red kit, $32 listed. The red RTR, $31. You can pay less money and have somebody else build it for you. Explain that. No idea. Probably comes in a smaller box. It took them less. <laughs> Did I have $32, $28 worth of fun? Yes, I did. Uh, doesn't matter if I hit it with a hammer right now. It was fun enough. Kind of uh, something different, a little change of pace. Every once in a while, you just want to, you know. Look at that. Look at the colors even. Not tug of war. So I uh, I didn't hate it. How bad is a twenty eight dollar RC? Now that I am only considering. Uh, the build itself. I am not considering the build quality because I'm not sure that this thing would be any fun to really drive without putting a considerable amount of quality electronics in it, which then I don't know if it would hold up to. Um, but I just wanted it to do this. I just wanted it to be a stupid little fun model build. And that's what it was for me. Um, you know, looking at like performance aspects of it, it has no steering angle. This is the worst. I've seen many toy grade cars with much better steering angle than this. Um, the transfer case hangs way low. I mean, it's halfway closer to the ground than the links are. You know? So, I mean, you're looking at, like, huge hang points. Um, who knows if that motor has any torque at all. The servo, pretty good guess that it's not going to be very powerful. Um, but I don't care. I was just building for fun um, because it's Friday and why not? I was charging batteries. My batteries are both done now. Um, I'll get my camera gear packed up. If it's a nice day tomorrow, I'm going to go take the honcho out and do some crawl. So that's, uh, yeah, I see. Thanks for all the tests. I'll, I'm going to mute you if you keep putting tests. 
<laughs> so, um, so, what do you know? I didn't have anything else to do before I went home. So, that's going to do it for this one. I, uh, I don't know if you guys have any, any anything else you want to see on this before, uh, you know, we're an hour and forty hour and forty five minutes, quite a while that gets to build just something like this little thing. Granted, I'm taking a lot of time and reading comments, responding to it, not necessarily just uh, you know paying attention for sure. Test run on the BRC ESC, you know, I got to wire it and. I'm not that interested. Um, I mean, the, the ES, the motor is right there. Let's see. Um, do I have a battery to use on this anymore, though? Um, I don't know that I have a battery for it because I this is a uh, yeah I would have to like decase this thing and uh, and get it to, to go I, I mean this is what I was like thinking I would use but I don't know that it's it would take me a while to probably get this set up right because I can't 100% remember uh, what went to what I can run 2S on that ESC. Shit, I don't know if I have two. I don't have any 2S batteries. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't. Motor. Yeah, I don't. Would this fit right underneath there? It would. Oh, man, what time is it? 6:48. But if I don't have a battery ready to go, it's not going to be much of a payoff to watch me wire this thing and then still not drive it. That seems equally as boring. Motor, that's the battery cables. Damn it. Um Let's see. Uh, Traxxas Mini Lipos work great. I don't have any Traxxas Mini Lipos. What do I have? So, I do have all my soldering stuff. Um, do I have any wire with me, though? I have to go grab wire. Oh, no, I have wire. Let's see. So I don't have like the motor plug that went to this ESC. I don't know. I must have cut it off when I was working on the uh, ECX. So to get it to work, I'm going to have to like try and solder directly to the little posts. Contra battery charged. Unplug the charger. Soldering station.
So that is an old crappy servo lead that will work. Let me see if I can get that servo lead. So like I mentioned in the beginning, I did not, I just kind of stuffed that servo lead, you know, like down in the case. I didn't really feed it to where it should be going. Oh, it's this side. So, hopefully, oh. come on, that servo lead's like kind of jammed in there, I think. I can see that this side is the side that's in there, I'm just trying to get it to... Come on. All right, I'm gonna undo the few bolts that it's gonna take to get this body off. All right, it's gonna take more than that. No, it is just four, you're right. This was not the plan. It's just gonna be something that The screws probably go in much easier the second time, though. Um, what ESC am I using? It's actually an ESC and receiver combo out of my ECX 124 scale barrage. Um, Body screws are off. I don't know where the last one went. I see three. There's. There's all four. Like I said, this is a ESC and receiver combo. Let's try and wire this thing up first, just to make sure that I can get it. Sorry if I'm uh, <laughs> not talking as much right now. Uh, does this top the gong? I I will say that I uh, I didn't hate this as much as I did the gong. I I think it was just because here's the difference. I had no expectations for this car, and I had really high expectations for the gong because that thing looked really cool. Really, I really liked. Like the look of that car, but it let me down. This one, I expected to be let down, but it really didn't. It was pretty much what I expected. So I'm going to just cut away the uh, case on this thing just so to give me some more room. Since, uh, let's see. There we go. Oh, 
All right. So now we've got, so those two are for the battery. These two are for the motor. Like I said, I lost the plug for this motor. So I am trying to get to the pins. There we go. So now I can get to the raw pins on the board. Say, it doesn't show which one's plus or minus, it doesn't matter. We can just reverse the transmitter. Now, power leads. When I pulled this ESC and receiver combo out of the ECX barrage, did not plan to reuse it. The ECX Barrage, for those of you who haven't ever used it, it's a $99 car, you know, ready to run little kit. So if you take, you know, the electronics out of a $99 car, you, for me anyway, I usually think that that's about as cheap of a vehicle as I'm going to play with, and I probably don't need those electronics anymore. However, I was wrong. Now this thing does have uh, LED outputs on it, and I do have the LEDs from it right here still. Does this grill have, this grill has LED inputs. Oh yeah, it came with an LED. It this thing comes with LEDs for the grill. that actually pop into place. Now, I don't know what the voltage for these is supposed to be. So if I hook up to the wrong voltage, there's a good chance you fry that. So I've tinned the old leads didn't do is just pay any attention to what side I took what off of though. Fuck. Man, <laughs> stripped those off there and I just didn't pay attention. Can I see where the trace goes at all? Oh, yep. Yeah. So the outside, no, inside is power. Maybe. Yes, it is. That side is hot. I should have paid better attention to that. I, these wires had insulation on them and I just took it off so that I could get to them to solder, but then I just stopped paying attention to what I was doing so I didn't know which was which. But I just looked at the little traces on the board and followed them to things that had wire on them still that I could tell what they were.
since I'm having to do kind of a hack job of wiring this to the board, I'll use a little bit of heat shrink. I just do it that other piece. Of All right. So I put some new power leads and motor leads. I'm going to separate these motor leads. And I'm going to put a little heat shrink on those, too. Again, if I wasn't such a hack when I would have taken this out the first time, this would have been basically a much more, you know, plug-and-play situation. But I just ripped this stuff out of my ECX, cut the wires too short. I should have not done that, you know. And would have had something much more usable, much easier to repurpose later. Okay. So, I'm out for a minute. So, where'd my heat gun go? So that's on, that's on. What side is supposed to be like this? So ground is to the outside. Motor. See if we have enough juice for one. Day. Yep. Hold on just a second. I don't know this phone number. Hello? Yes? Hey, Candy, how's it going? Yeah. Uh, I will have I will have people here uh, on Saturday from like 12, 12 to, uh, or sorry, 6 to 12.30. Okay, great. Perfect. Thank you very much. I won't be here, but they will. All right. Thank you. Yep. All right. Thanks. <laughs> Bye. Sorry about that.
Um, let's see. So let's back on. I can tell this servo leads a little old. It's getting a little crusty. Let's see. I'm not going to heat shrink those motor wires. I'm not concerned about those. So there's that, there's that part. Now I need to get the battery. I, have to, I do have to go run in the other room and grab a battery plug. So I'll be back in a second. The only thing I could think of that uses the 2S LiPo that I have is my little Tamiya dancing rider. If you haven't seen a Tamiya dancing rider, the coolest thing you've ever seen. Now, problem two here is that I don't have another EC3 plug. Um, but we're going to do what you shouldn't do, which is just
strip them. Now, does this have batteries in it? It does not feel like it. do have batteries here though, handily enough. All right, so we have power there. I am going to, I'm not gonna direct connect the battery because I still want to use this in the Tiny Dancer. But we're going to do the other thing you shouldn't do, which is just jam them in there and tape them. That's way too much tape. Tape isn't going to work. Shoe goo is easily removable, though. Let's see. This is all a terrible idea. I hope that no, if anybody watched this long, then the amount of terrible idea. This is so dumb. Anybody who's watching this should definitely lose respect for me. For me is what I meant. I am going to tin the end of these at least. I was thinking maybe I bought more than one EC3, but I did not. Dumb. <laughs> Woo. Turn, let's turn the switch off. That scared the shit out of me. Stay in there, damn it. This is so dumb. I mean, I wish I had the right freaking battery connector. I would, but I'm not screwing up my good tiny dancer battery for a dumb project like this. Um, more glue. My, that was still on, yes. My heat gun's on. <laughs> All right, 
And he sent it to Servo. Got it. Kind of. It's not centered. Trim. Scheme. There. All right. Let's put the body back on at least now. Well, I've already hacked this glue job on this battery lead. Oh, this is so dumb. I can't even believe myself in case. You know, anybody's wondering. And no, I'm not going to attach it. I didn't mean not going to attach the body. I meant not attach the uh, ESC. One more screw.
severely lacking on power. Not going not gonna to lie there. Now, this is a 2S LiPo. It's fairly well charged, too, the LiPo. I'm checking the hell of that. Little on the jumpy side. <laughs> okay, not exactly the smoothest thing. <laughs> so it could definitely use a servo. Um, the gear reduction needs a little bit of work, but it's not awful. Now, I don't know what the stock ESC it comes with is. Um, but, the, you know, this ECX one might not be that awful. A little jumpy. Okay, there we go. It ran. It drove. It's not the worst thing I've ever seen. Um, I'll I'll, go, I'll say it's worth thirty two dollars or twenty eight whatever the, whatever I paid for this thing twenty eight dollars. I had twenty eight dollars worth of fun. It could use a, a proper wiring job on the uh, battery. Not gonna lie. That was pretty hack of me. Um, that was as hack of me as I've ever really experienced from myself. I feel bad. I feel like I need a shower now after I did that. So, come on. Hopefully this battery is small enough to, there we go. Um, a real battery plug on this thing. That old 2S LiPo, though. It's a little uh, E-Flight 2S 1300 milliamp. Not the worst size battery for it. The uh, Shugu did remove easily. We're, we're safe there. Uh, so, that's it. We drove it. What do you know? It works. Um, I'm going to stuff all the wires and antenna and everything in the uh, toolbox. Battery cover, whatever they want to call it. The real question is, what are you going to do with it after this video? Um, I have no idea. I think it's kind of a cool little static model, even. If, if, if that is even all that I ever do with it, I wouldn't be mad. Um, but it was a fun, fun exercise. I had a good time. And uh, I'm still hungry because I still haven't eaten dinner at 7.30. Um, um, so yeah, every once in a while, a little break from my $1,000 honcho for a $28 car. Not saying that I'd give up that honcho. <laughs> so I appreciate all you guys who uh, stuck around. A bunch of you still here. I'm, I'm happy some of you stuck it out. Hopefully uh, it wasn't a waste of your Friday night. Because I had a good time here. 
So let's see. Unless there's any questions while I'm packing up, I'll uh, I'll answer any questions and then uh, I'm gonna cut this thing off so I can finish cleaning up and get home. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Thanks for all the comments. I appreciate it. Good time. Uh, more budget build uh, this week. I got more parts in today. Uh, I've got more parts in this week. I've got to do a little bit of working ahead on that um, so that I can make sure and have – I'll be gone for a week. I just want to make sure that I have plenty of content ready and uploaded so that I don't fall behind at all. Get all my stuff packed back into my my little cart here is fairly efficient. I've got just about everything I usually need. Let's see. What's in the works for the budget build? Well, since we have a servo in it now, I need to do, you know, now I can try and oh, my wife is calling. I should take this one. Hey. I am packing up right now. That's all I have. Uh, probably not. So I'll uh, see how many I'm with it. I'll let you know when I'm on my way. I'll let you know when I'm on my way. No. No. It's not on the way. I'll call you in a few. Bye. All right. <laughs> Kit name uh, WPL something. WPL truck. <laughs> um, no, you will never see any upgrade on this from me, probably. It's WPL C14. Yes, wifey waiting at home. <laughs> All right, okay. cleaned up right there it was our our Friday night. So, thanks again, everyone. I uh, I'm gonna cut this off so I can finish cleaning up, get out of here. Uh, that's all I got. So, thanks for watching. Like the video if you're still watching. Subscribe if you're not if you're not already. I appreciate it. Thanks all for the comments. Crazy fun. Um, have I entered the KOH race ever? No, I have not. One day, one day, I'll be there. At least co driving, maybe navigating. A pit crew, that's about it. So, anyway, thanks, guys. <laughs> we'll see you on the next one. I didn't notice I was still going. <laughs> Why are you guys still here? You shouldn't be still watching. <laughs> I thought when I clicked the button, I'd have been done. It's a good thing I didn't do anything stupid. <laughs> Take two. <laughs> <laughs>